This is Greg Troutline with Marine Technology Reporter, and we're here at Oceanology International in London, and we're with Rob Duell, the integration engineer, Saab Technologies, to talk about the new EM17 electric manipulator. Rob, I've seen you've been dra dra uh, drawing quite a crowd uh, as you put the manipulator through its paces. Why don't you give us a little insight on the new manipulator and specifically why it was created? Yeah, sure. So we wanted to go into the market with a fully electric work class manip. Uh, it's not really been done before and that's because it's been so difficult to do. Um, but we're very pleased we have a live one here now to show everyone. Um, we have a large competitor in the US and we think now we've got something to bring to the market that's uh, really very exciting and it can go on multiple vehicles, not just our own. Okay. Can you give us a little technical specification? What specifically can this do? Okay, so <clears throat> it's uh, power requirements for it. It's, uh, there's two options, uh, DC voltage between uh, 500 and 800 volts, or there's an AC option that uses an external bottom, which is uh, 110 volts AC. Uh, at full extension, it can pick out uh, 122 kilograms, and at minimum extension, it can pick up 454 kilograms. So it's very powerful, uh, and it's very precise. The uh, accuracy and repeatability is plus or minus half a degree. So it's very accurate. Uh, it uses harmonic drive gearboxes and permanent magnet synchronous AC motor drives. Um, so yeah, we're very pleased in uh, how it's gone, and uh, it seems to have gone down well. Okay, so when you look at electric manipulators versus traditional, traditional hydraulic type units, what are the pros and cons? And I guess from the integration engineer aspect of it, what are the considerations of incorporating this on a machine versus the other types? Yeah, I think if you're going for the hydraulic arms, there's the obvious side of the environmental impact. Uh, if there's any leakages or anything like that, we don't have those problems. We have some oil on board the arm for pressure compensation, but it's environmentally friendly. Uh, so that's much less of a problem. As far as integrating this arm onto the system, there's one cable and it's mounted on with bolted on. Whereas on a hydraulic arm, there's a comms cable, there's a compensation cable, and there's a pressure and tank hose. Uh, so there's a lot more things to put on, and you need an IHPU to run the hydraulics for uh, the hydraulic arms. So there's a lot less to this. You don't need as much surrounding infrastructure on the RV to help it. Okay. So, and again, just to confirm, this is available not simply for your own ROVs, it's for any ROV that's out yeah. there that needs a manipulator? Yeah, one that can support the power that is needed to drive the arm.